Hello everyone. As you've probably noticed, I've been a little quiet on my shark channels. Some of you know that I'm working on a side project to save uh, wildlife habitat nearby, and then I'll get back to the sharks when that's over. But I will take a moment to talk about a couple of things that are in the news recently, and I just want to address them really quick because I keep hearing about them. And it's two things. It's uh, the orcas uh, port and starboard down in South Africa where they keep saying that the whales are decimating shark populations and the other one is the recent fatality from a shark bite in Hawaii. I'm just gonna rant about the shark bite in Hawaii thing really quick because here's why it bothers me. Here I am in Northern California and some person who doesn't know me at all and doesn't know anything about sharks sees me wearing a shark shirt and stops me and says hey did you hear about the uh, shark attack in Hawaii? My point being why? Why does he know that? Why does every regular old person on the street know about this shark bite? It's the first fatality in Hawaiian waters since 2015. And I guess I answered my own question in a sense because that's why you're hearing about it. It's rare. But the guy goes on to say, oh yeah, was it a tiger shark? Those are the aggressive ones, right? Aggressive, first fatality since 2015 in an ocean teeming with idiots that don't know how to survive in the ocean and we have this incredible predator and someone f dies in the last four and a half years and the shark is a demon again. I'm not saying the, that being bitten by a shark is a pleasant experience but come on why does the news make sure that you hear about these things? And again, my personal theory is that it's because it doesn't happen often enough. If people were getting bitten by sharks at the rate that people are dying in car crashes, it wouldn't make the news anymore. Okay, so on to talking about port and starboard, the orcas decimating shark populations in South Africa. Right. Let's talk about the word decimate, shall we? Two orcas have thus far killed less sharks total than the Natal Sharks Board kills in a month with their nets and drumlines. You can't even measure the amount of sharks being killed offshore due to legal longlining practices with even new longlining licenses having been opened up in South Africa recently. The coast has been getting wiped out at a steady pace over the last few decades while marine coastal management boats sit rotting in the harbors of Cape Town. And we're going to sit here and talk about two orcas that have found a new diet as the problem of the ocean. And yes, some people are talking about the need to remove these orcas. Obviously, there's something unique about these orcas, not just their adapted diet, but also their lopped over dorsal fins. And one of them was seen with another orca that had a chopped off dorsal fin. So are these orcas adapting? Is there something wrong with them? Have they been separated from their pods? Did they not learn how to eat the way that the other orcas do? Bottom line is, it doesn't matter what the answer to any of those things are. They are amazing animals that have found a way to survive, a way to eat, and this is the whole eating of the livers thing. That's pretty normal with orcas. They do it with the white sharks. They did it with the white sharks that they killed out here at the Farallon Islands. They do it with blue whales and humpback whales and fin whales that they hunt down. They spend four hours hunting them down and then just eat the tongue or the liver. That's an orca thing, whether we like it or not. But to sit there and talk about these two orcas as a problem for the future of our sharks while we absolutely rape the ocean with the fishing industry. Recreational fishing not helping out either. And then you've got the Natal Sharks board up the coast killing the sharks that migrate up there or the sharks that are resident to that area. Just stop with this idiotic talk about solving the orca problem. Anytime humans have tried to solve anything, it's never, ever, ever worked. Let me repeat, ever. I have a personal story about seven gills. Yes, I've dove with seven gills, but that's not the story. The story is that back in 2004, my first uh, summer working with white sharks in South Africa, 
the operators were still using the livers of seven gill sharks to attract white sharks to the boats because the livers were so extra incredibly oily that they left an oil slick that went for a long way and would hopefully make the sharks interested in coming over to that boat. No, not chum. They weren't chopping up these sharks, but they were using the livers and putting those in sacks on the side of the boat. I know because I can still remember the smell. Back then they had us sleeping next to the bait lockers. So to be clear, products of seven gill sharks were being used in the white shark tourism industry. Now, if seven gill sharks can survive that sort of exploitation, I think they can survive the orcas, but maybe not in combination with human exploitation. Good news is that the shark diving operators and scientists worked together to agree not to continue to exploit the seven gill sharks. By the time I was back in 2007, seven gill sharks were a tourist attraction. Maybe they always were, but I was aware of it when I went back. And you dove with seven gill sharks on the coast on the way out to see blue sharks, or you can stop and see white sharks. But I decided to go out and see blue sharks. And as Chris Fallows had told me during an interview, when he started, you would see around 200 blue sharks and makos combined out on the plagic dive. That, in only a short period of time, has been reduced to a handful of sharks. And they weren't even very big. The big ones were already long wiped out. And I saw this with my own eyes. That's the effect of fishing on shark populations. And we want to sit here and talk about orcas as a problem. It's certainly a media opportunity. There's no denying that. Orcas killing sharks and claiming that orcas are decimating shark populations. And you can imagine who's going to jump on this opportunity, or at least I'm imagining, especially now that they've teamed up with SeaWorld, you've got the kings of media and manipulation and shark killing, Osearch, who are probably going to put out some sort of campaign of saving sharks by raising awareness about orcas by putting those orcas in captivity. And there's enough dumb people out there to where what I just said, when presented without sarcasm, will actually think, oh wow, how great. Our kids can go and learn about orcas inside of a prison while their removal helps save shark populations. In the meantime, the actual shark populations and other fish will continue to be fished into extinction. I did pay attention to the last uh, poll that I put out and I will get to making those videos that you requested. I just got to finish this uh, project because it is time sensitive to saving the habitat near me. If you're interested in that side project, you can go to my Watching Humans channels, both on YouTube and Instagram.